So did Zinn just break the Swiss watch market? That's the question on the table today. I saw while scrolling through the, uh, while scrolling through Reddit, as I like to do through the watches, that uh, people were talking about the new Zinn 903. And if you scroll through their laundry list of releases, all of which are incredible, you will find these new releases that just came out here in May of 2024. Let's see, they start right here. The Zinn 903 is their version of the Breitling Navitimer that they introduced after buying the rights to make it back in 1979 from Breitling when it was owned by Willie Breitling uh, at the time, the kind of successor to the founder there uh, of Breitling, in, in the Breitling company itself. And Breitling was going through some struggles with the quartz crisis, needed to raise some cash, sold the rights, sold some of the parts and equipment to Zinn to make their own version of the, of the Navitimer. They came out with the 903. Uh, recent versions of the 903 have had a interior rotating bezel and that extra crown at 10 o'clock to actuate that bezel and that extra crown just really ruins the symmetry for me and I'm so glad that they're getting rid of it now in this new version of the 903. They discontinued the 903 a couple years ago. They've just come out with one, two, three, four, five new versions, what they're calling the ST2. As far as I can tell in Zen world, the ST um, kind of means version, I think, in their abbreviation. So let's take a look at these and how they stack up against the current lineup of Breitling Navitimers. So first here is the 903 STBE2 on the fine link bracelet. Let's take a look at this. And it is, all of these are 41 millimeters in diameter, which is the same as my vintage or sort of vintage, about 20 year old uh, Breitling Navitimer. I'll put some pictures of that up. And this is visually very similar to the Navitimer with, let me get mine out over here, with the stick hands and the red tip on the chronograph hand and the various scales that are used. No push down or no uh, screw down pushers that are used. The shape of the crown, the knurling on the crown, the recessed registers, the uh, triple registers, the layout, all just basically identical to the, the Navitimer. The bracelet is similar, but it doesn't have the angles on the links that's so distinctly brightling. Let's take a look at some of these other pictures here. That's the loom. So generous amount of loom, supernova on the indices and the hands, nothing on the chronograph hand or that outer bezel, which may, I would have thought about using. Uh, there's an angle shot showing this uh, dome sapphire, some of the finishing, very nice. If you've never held a Zen, the build quality is just phenomenal. Uh, absolutely rivals anything made by the Swiss. Here you see the column wheel on the movement, which is not in-house. It's a third-party La Joux Pere Swiss movement. Um, so you're saving some money there over the Breitling Navitimer. First of all, you're saving some money just on the brand. And then you're saving money on the movement because the new Navitimers use their B01 movement, which is made in co cooperation with some of the other Swiss brands like Tudor. Also uses that movement, which are Great movements, Medass certified, column wheel chronographs. Um, but this is also a column wheel. It's gonna have that nice snappy immediate action. Uh, good amount of finishing and not quite as nice. The rotor is definitely not as nice as what's used on those B01 movements, but still a really pretty view there from the back. Notably that's 20 bar. So that's 200 meters of water resistance which is the biggest technical improvement over even what Breitling produces today. The Navitimers are three bar, that's 30 meters. That's barely enough confidence for you to take this watch with you uh, splashing around in any kind of water. Definitely would not want to take a regular Navitimer swimming or anything. But this from Zinn, with 200 meters of water resistance, you could go swimming in it, you could 
wear it in the shower. You could wear it anywhere and not be worried about any kind of water. So big, big benefit here to the Zin over even the modern Breitling Navitimers. Chunky at uh, over 14 millimeters thick, but that kind of comes with the territory with these uh, mechanical chronographs. They all tend to be pretty thick. So 14 and a half millimeters thick, 22 millimeter lugs. That's all pretty standard. 88 grams, it's not too heavy. Of course, stainless steel, sapphire. Uh, it's available for pre-order now, and the price on this one is under 4000 so $39.70. If we flip over to the Breitling website, take a look at what they've got. Currently, most of their lineup is here in the 43 millimeter category, so uh, they do not currently make a blue face with the white subdials in either 41 or 43. I was just looking at the 41s and the closest thing they've got is this version with diamonds, which is over 16 grand, which is crazy. They've got a uh, black dial in 41. That is $9,450. They've got a blue dial with the black subdials, still $9,500. Um, they might make one in 46 which is huge, but for a Navitimer is kind of historically accurate. So here's one they do make uh, this one. Now let's get rid of the 41s. I only want to see 46s. Yeah, they do make a 46 millimeter with the blue dial with the white subdials. It's got a recess date weird spot recessed into that because the, the watch is so much bigger than the movement it's recessed into that sub register and that's over ten thousand dollars so compared to that four thousand dollars for this watch is pretty reasonable for what you're getting let's take a look at some of these other versions they've come out with this is looks like the same thing on a strap so the stbe2 on the leather strap, it's a couple hundred dollars cheaper. I would get it on the bracelet because you can get a good quality leather strap in 22 millimeters from just about anybody, but that bracelet you're only gonna get from Zen. Here's a limited edition, 500 pieces, and this really is pretty. Look at this light blue brushed radial finish. Not quite as legible because you don't really get a whole lot of contrast from the hands, but that sure is a pretty dial. Wow, look at that. Same kind of, ooh, blue. That blue loom really does stand out on that shot. So, okay, down here, 4170, so a couple hundred dollars more if that light blue is your fancy. That's really pretty. Uh, here's a black dial version, same price as the blue dial, basically. Thirty-nine seventy, yeah, same price. And the black dial is going to be the most legible. My Navitimer is a black dial, and I absolutely love it. I don't wear it enough. Um, it's not really cuff friendly because it is thick. It's roughly the same thick, around fourteen millimeters. But I absolutely love my Navitimer. But yeah, that legibility white on black very good the red accents really pop here on the scales and on the tip of that chronometer no that's not right the chronograph hand <laughs> get it right chronograph hand oh man classic classic design let's take a closer look there at the knurling on that bezel it's very similar to the knurling it's just a little bit more scalloped where it's cut out at the tops, but not at the bottoms. Whereas my vintage Navitimer, it's cut kind of evenly, more like a gear tooth on the side of mine, which gives a great, great purchase. So green loom here on these regular versions, which is the X1 Super Luminova. And there you go on the strap as well, 3730. So that's coming in compared to the 43 and the 46 and the 41. That's roughly 60% uh, less than this one. 
50% less than a 43, about 40% less than a than a 41 millimeter, just in rough numbers. Oh man, uh, you do get more options as far as the colorways from Breitling right now. You get some solid gold and some versions without the, um, you, know, you get some GMT versions here from Breitling. I have a feeling that if these 903 models turn out to be popular, that they'll gladly add some of those uh, different colorways and versions here. Just starting out kind of reg just kind of modestly, conservatively with the blue dials and the white sub dials. Could definitely have room in the catalog for maybe something green, maybe something even darker red would be awesome. So great job, Zen. Um, I'm certainly going to consider this if I hadn't just put a pre-order on uh, the Formex that I did my last video on. I might do a pre-order on one of these. Um, but could could somebody have a Navitimer and a Zen in their collection? They'd really have to be a serious collector to have more than one Navitimer style watch. But uh, just wanted to put these on folks' radar. Um, they're available here in the U.S. through Watch Buys. So I imagine you can get them uh, at a lot of different other places in Europe because, of course, these are made in Germany. Uh, I have a feeling these are going to be popular. Um, looking forward to seeing one of these in person. Then if you're watching, please send me one so I can review it. I promise I'll send it back uh, un unharmed after I take wonderful photos of it. Um, one last note here. The regular versions have the date tucked away here between the 4 and 5, uh, as does my vintage Navitimer. Uh, the special edition I noticed it does not have a date at all and that just makes for a nice clean look I'd say get rid of the date on all of these especially if you could toss the date wheel and make it a millimeter half a millimeter thinner I would absolutely do that um, look at that sign crown it's got the Zin S on the crown you can tell from this angle piston pushers just love it what a, what a handsome design. One of the all-time great watch designs is the Navitimer with the white subdials, the Panda, or reverse Panda, actually. Absolutely love this. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Please like and subscribe if you'd like some more heads up on new watches and releases like this. But for the time being, I guess I will leave it there. So have fun, God bless, and I will see you in the next one.